Episode of The Ruthless Awakening. This is a podcast about personal development, self discovery, and all the other assortments of wacky shit about reality and the human experience in all senses. If this is your first time, welcome. And if this is not your first time, also welcome. I mean, there's not more than that. But let's not beat around the bush. This is a follow-up episode of what we were discussing in the previous episode that I entitled The Magic of the Breath. We'll call this one The Magic of the Breath Part 2. And uh, this one's all about... Well, we'll do a quick recap of what we spoke about in the previous episode. You can go and listen to that. But basically, we spoke about the connection between the conscious and the unconscious mind and the breath connection between that. Uh, The difference between active and passive breathing and the benefits of both. And ultimately, how becoming aware and tethering your awareness to the breath gives you a deeper layer of self-awareness. And that in itself is is an advantage at life. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that right now. If you want to hear all of that, you can check out the previous episode. This episode, we're going to be talking about the breath and the altered states of consciousness, how to use the breath to enter into deep meditative states, and how to stop a panic attack if you ever find yourself in the unfortunate situation to be attacked by panic. As I have lately, but uh, we're not going to get into that. Anyway, let's get to the first part. The breath and the altered states of consciousness. To really get into this one, we need to understand that we all have a baseline of consciousness. We're all, if you take nothing, you know, no coffee, you just wake up, you sit there for a while. Eventually, the machine goes completely online energy levels are optimal your mind is engaged and you come to this point of baseline who you are when nothing is happening you can call that your baseline consciousness when you interact from this you're just making baseline decisions usually it's about the shit that you need to get done and that usually is either about some objective that you want to achieve or just basic life stuff. When you go to the gym, for example, and you start working out, working up the sweat, getting the blood pumping, endorphins moving, you enter into a different state of consciousness. This state lasts for a while, actually. It translates and impacts your confidence and a lot of other factors, and it actually can shape the way that you view reality, you know, this state of consciousness. But by itself, even then, if you stop working out um, and just go back home, sit in your house, you'll return back to that baseline consciousness. But even in this exercise state, you're still operating from baseline consciousness. Now, the breath by itself can also achieve a shift in consciousness, and that is pretty awesome. By engaging to certain types of breathwork patterns, you can achieve altered states of consciousness. It's not the same as a psychedelic experience, but it is incredibly potent. And in some cases, I would even say more impressive. Not, I wouldn't call it impressive. That's that's the wrong word. It's it's more endogenous it's more generated from the self and so therefore the relevance is incredibly high with when you're taking psychedelics a lot of the visuals are uh, chaotic even within the organized geometrical patterns that that emerge from whatever it is that you're seeing 
it's some sort of chaos but when you do it from the self there is a relevance to the person itself to your own identity to your uh, history and that's a fascinating aspect of this altered states of consciousness that you can achieve using the breath however you can also achieve deep meditative states with the breath and you can actually get into a deep meditative state rather quickly if you understand how the breath impacts the nervous system and how just changing your breath work pattern can shift your mind into a much more calm and clear headed state there's a lot of videos on my channel that can allow you to just empty your mind and reach the state of stillness one of the easiest ways to enter into a deep meditative state is to just simply exhale longer than you inhale. That's it. So if you're taking a four second inhalation, you can exhale for six. And just a slight variance in this breath will begin to shift you into a parasympathetic state, meaning you'll enter into resting and digesting, relaxation and and if you're sitting up while you're doing this, you can just inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. You'll start feeling more relaxed. And if you practice that you're just exhaling your thoughts and your worries in the process, you'll begin to empty yourself. It's this whole exercise of just emptying yourself with every exhalation. So you take in a deep breath and you just hold whatever thought is plaguing you at that moment and you just exhale exhale and then you just let it go you just let the thought go and if the thought's still persistent you just do it again and you let it go and you just keep on doing that until eventually there aren't any more thoughts to let go and then it's just you and this vastness that's around you and that's pretty awesome and that's also sort of a way that you will deal with panic attacks you see panic attack is really an onslaught of different feelings mostly about fear about losing something and i know this because i've had to deal with my fair share of panic attacks over the past few days but it's about this realization that you're fucked right you're just absolutely fucked if something doesn't go in a particular way and because it's in the future there's a sense of panic to it you know it's like if this doesn't work then you know what is my life it's just beyond your imagining it's beyond but you know it's bad like it's whatever is beyond whatever you can imagine but it's not good so that's what a panic attack is in order to stop a panic attack you need to first be able to interrupt the stream of consciousness that's being dumped on you you know all of this negative consequences to this potential future situation you need to be able to interrupt it so one of the best ways to do that is to do box breathing which is just an equal inhalation holding your breath exhalation and holding your breath you make a little box with the breath and you just do that for a few minutes and you'll start to slow down the mind and interrupt it one thing that I like to do that I, I think works very well is to start with a quick inhalation and then add a second. So let's say, you know, whatever the speed that you're breathing naturally, you'll just do an inhalation and you exhale and then you add a second. So then you'll go, you know, three seconds and another three seconds out and then you go four seconds. And you do five seconds and six seconds and seven seconds until you get about to eight, nine seconds. And then you just keep it there. And what you would have done at that moment is you just slow down all of this shit that's happening in your mind. And you're just adding some more space and more space and more space. And eventually you're going to have enough space in between these breaths that you can actually start differentiating and saying well what what is really important and what isn't important what can i do and what can't i do and what if shit is really fucked up do i just accept it and move on adapt as i have many times in my life or do do you find a way and more than often if you just 
allow and accept all of the things that are and you just focus on the things that you can do things work out more than often like more more times it works out than it doesn't but that doesn't mean that it isn't scary so panic attacks are totally valid defense mechanisms for when shit gets really difficult in your life but in order to not be enslaved to them learn to use the breath to interrupt that stream of negative consciousness and it's not easy because it takes some willpower to interrupt it and to stop being the center of the chaos and to just allow things to be and to accept all inevitable consequences the positive and the negative as a simple state of existence but when you are able to do that using the breath you will be able to endure much more hardship with a clear head and make better choices and that my friends is a fucking superpower anyway i'm over the 10 minutes according to my estimations but hey it doesn't matter we'll do this one we're going to put it out to the prints i'll do some general editing but we'll see what the hell thank you for listening if you're still here like subscribe drop a comment tell me what you think and i'll see you on the next episode of the ruthless awakening thank you one more time traveler have a good one and there's probably going to be a video so why not do it just see what it where it takes you i'm going to let google i mean i'm going to let youtube decide whatever that is i'll see you on the flip peace out